Hello everyone and welcome to my first cosy video! Woo Could I look any more lacklustre? I promise I was actually excited for this. If you're actually seeing this video then that means I have somehow managed to get this video out. This was me this morning. I have got to post this video tomorrow. That means I have two two days to edit. <laughs> so this is the first of my two cozy videos. The second one, God willing, will be out on Sunday and that is my fantasy thrift flip remaking the shoes that Manolo Blahnik made for the film Marie Antoinette. So by now you probably already know what cozy is but if you didn't it's the costume symposium of 2021 just like we had co-covid last year. Also just to let you know I haven't made a badge for you this video. Don't be looking out for it. I haven't made one that's not there. I'm not that organized I'm sorry. So basically a few months ago I was the very lucky winner of a three yard giveaway for the Fancy Styles Fabrics giveaway. They're basically silk vendors based in California and they do giveaways. They used to do it weekly but I don't think they're doing it weekly at the moment on their Instagram anyway and I won three yards and to take advantage of the free shipping I also then cheekily bought some more fabric as well but because it's so expensive I only ended up getting like three yards because it's really expensive so then I didn't really know what to do with this quite small amount because if you're going to make 18th century products you kind of need like 10 plus meters. So I took to my Instagram account and I asked my followers on there what they thought I could do with this small amount of fabric and a lot of people actually suggested the Amalia jacket. So the Amalia jacket is from Scroop Patterns and is quote based on the fashionable jacket styles worn in the last quarter of the 18th century, specifically 1775 to 1795. But in the pattern information, it does actually say that this pattern is intended for women who would be a bit poorer. So maybe that floral cotton, that Ikea one that everyone is obsessed with would have been a bit more suitable than silk. But I'm a fancy bish, so we got silk. This video is going to be a part one where I just sort of draw things out, draft things out, mock things up, decide what I need to do, buy things, stuff like that. And there will be a part two, three, 200, however many I need until I have made the final outcome. Now, just before we get fully started, I wanna give you the situation. So I have got my Amalia jacket here and I've actually already printed it out. So I printed it out on A0 paper because I happen to live near um, a printing guy and he does A0. So I have printed it out, but not very neatly because what I normally do with all of my patterns is print them out and then actually trace around each of the pieces. So say if I'm thinking I'm a size eight or a 10, then I will trace around maybe the 10 um, and then make it up in my mock-up and see whether it actually definitely fits. So that's what I definitely will be doing with this pattern as well. I just wanted to show you how you print it out. I think you can print it out A4 as well and then you have to glue the pieces together. Um, but I would say if you do have the option to do it A0, that is definitely gonna make your life easier. And then here, mm, we have the fancy stuff fabrics. I love these so much, they're honestly my pride and joy. <laughs> so what I was thinking is the main outer bit of the fabric in this rosy gold embroidered. So we've got that, then we've got this rose gold which matches basically the background, like these are really the same. And then we've got this pinkier one, um, which has more of, I would say, a gray reflect, but also goes very well because the main jacket is going to be in this colour, the stomacher section in this colour, the petticoat with this, and then with this as a trim at the bottom. So I'm going to draw that out. Just before we probably start, I wanted to show you guys how exactly I go through the process of drawing stuff out. So when I was in school doing my A-levels, my teachers always said in textiles this is, that it doesn't matter if you cannot exactly draw the bodies, fashion illustration, you can just trace them. And I do think that that is very true. If you are gonna wanna do this kind of more full time, then I would suggest learning how to draw a bit more, but there is nothing wrong in having to trace the body shape and then drawing your designs onto them. So I have a few printouts here. And then I have a ton of tracing paper here, which I've used for various projects um, to trace around. But I also do like to draw this ponyo. <laughs> 
I also do like to draw and this time last year went through a phase of kind of um, drawing out fashion illustrations, learning a bit more how to draw. So I started off really simple, just going through basic shapes. This is all just from YouTube videos as well. Basic faces, you know, learning how to draw with the circles and stuff like that, looking at different angles. This body was based off of Bella Hadid <laughs> and I didn't trace this one. So it really just depends on kind of how confident you're feeling with drawing, but there's nothing wrong with tracing. So I think I'm actually going to trace for this one and I'm going to trace, I'm going to trace this figure right here and then draw my design onto her. you could tell that I was doing watercolour there and once it had dried or I had made the process quicker by hair drying it because time is of the essence. I then went in with some coloured pencils just to add some details. So I'm just having another look at the Screw Patterns website and particularly the inspiration behind the Amalia jacket and I'm seeing that quite a lot of these jackets have some kind of trim on. Because originally I was thinking, oh, a poorer woman's jacket probably wouldn't have trim, but these do. And we all know that I love trim. Trim is definitely my favorite part of doing anything 18th century. So if I can include some, I'm gonna. So of course I then added a frill to the bottom of the petticoat and I might add some frills to the bodice as well around the stomach kind of area, but uh, I didn't draw it in yet. I'm just gonna decide when I'm doing it. You're the only sight to see Feels like the right time I, Let me spit my game You know that this room got me moving this way You've been in the also, while looking on Scroop Patterns website, I realised that this, of course, is supposed to be worn over stays. And I did know that. And I thought I could just use some of the stays that I already have. But you know what, I'm not going to make it easy for myself, obviously. So I was just going to have a look through Stays and Corsets by Mandy Barrington, Volume 1 and 2, and also Patterns of Fashion by Janet Arnold. This is the first one. And basically decide what stays I want to do, if I definitely do want to make any. So that is our next step. So I think I've decided which stays I would like to go for. Um, this is the one that I made in my last video. Of course a tree, but this one is the one that I want to do. So this one here. Um, so these are the 1776 half boned stays. And I think the shape of that is just gonna be really perfect for under the jacket. And what's really amazing about this book, which I'm, you know, I go on about this a lot and you're probably sick of it, but this actually, you input your measurements and then it tells you exactly how to plot it. So you draw out your basic block first and then you plot all of your corsetry or stays onto your block using your measurements and it's really helpful. So I will be making that at some point as well. And now I need to decide on which fabric I want to use. I think I'm gonna go for this fabric. So this is also a silk and it's kind of iridescent, a very bright red and then more of a coppery orange and it's absolutely beautiful. I think I have two meters of this or a meter and a half. I can't really remember, um, but it looks like this, but is obviously not that thick. So I will have to do an inner lining layer and possibly also an outer lining layer of calico and then this will be kind of my fashion fabric over the top. But I think this is going to be really beautiful for that. 
As a final step, I just wrote down anything that I needed to buy or anything that I then needed to do next. And then that's kind of it, guys.